What's going on, everybody? It's Childish. You're back out of the game, coming at you with another video for Summoner's War Lost in Turia. In today's video, we're going to be jumping into everything I believe you need to know when you first get started in this game. Uh, it has been about 24 hours since the release of this game, so we've learned a lot. But again, you already know if you've been watching my content for quite some time, I'm probably going to miss something. So do me a favor after the end of this video, if there's anything super important that you want to let the community know, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, so from what I remember when I first started out here, because uh, again, I played the tutorial on this one and I've also played uh, the, the tutorial in the uh, beta launch or whatnot here. Um, basically, they're going to give you four different stages, four different categories that you're basically going to have to accomplish in order for you to kind of jump into the game and get going here. So the funny thing of it is, is that when you get started in this game, they jump you right into the doom mode here and they basically allow you to just learn a couple of things about the game when it comes to just overall cards you get, the type of game this actually is, you know, real time strategy. Uh, they talk a little bit about the elemental advantage. You know, you got the fire stronger on wind, wind is stronger on water, water stronger on fire. Then of course you got light and dark that are even uh, neutral towards the main three elements, but also obviously the, uh, uh, they're strong against one another. Um, they also talked about the countering uh, mechanism of this game, uh, which is really, really unique to the game and show you basically how to go about countering. And then of course they finish off with a fourth uh, part of the tutorial, essentially showing you just basically just doing a regular gameplay battle, uh, letting you get a feel for the uh, match in real time. So uh, again, if you are coming from some of this where Sky Arena and you are doing this for the event here, you're probably like, oh my God, what is this? What is going on? This is just so much different than, you know, what I'm used to be. Okay, right. As you guys know, some of this where Sky Arena is a 4v4 or 3v3 turn-based uh, RPG, right? Uh, and so in this game, is completely different. We're talking about real-time strategy. We've got eight units that we're focusing on, four in the front line, four in the back line here. And as you guys can see, we got a multitude of cards right down on the below, which is one of the three things that you can get in this game. When we talk about summoning, you got monsters, you got spells, and then you got skill stones. So the first things you're seeing right here are gonna be the monsters. Again, uh, each of the monsters have uh, a couple of things attributed to them, right? On the top left, they have a certain amount of mana that they cost as well as uh, the element that they are on the bottom left. And then the top or the bottom right is gonna show the level that the specific unit um, that it currently is that. So as you can see, as far as my current lineup goes in this team, I got a wide variety of uh, units here, uh, all, all of them in various levels, various uh, elements, um, but they're all, you know, have, uh, in this particular situation, they, they have a little bit of uh, synergy going on here, which of course we'll get into some gameplay here in a little bit. Um, but as far as the, the takeaway from this one, you just gotta know that when you're, you know, coming into this game, the gotcha aspect is gonna allow you to summon cards, summon units, uh, summon spells, uh, and of course, uh, summon skill stones. Now, skill stones are something really, really unique to this game. Um, I will go ahead and show you Jean if I can here. I don't know if it'll allow you to do it, but skill stones is something that you can that get that benefits uh, the specific character. They're going to give you some kind of bonus for the character, and you actually have different skill stones of different, uh, you know, rarities and whatnot here. So obviously, you know, some of the normal ones are going to give you some basic stats, but some of the better ones, like the hero one or legendary one, is going to give you something really, really nice, something that's really going to catapult your unit. Uh, that much more, right? And while we're in this kind of section here, in addition to improving your units, not just by leveling up the monsters uh, and you know applying or and putting the skill stones, you also have the opportunity to uh, utilize runes. Yes, runes are in this game. While they're not super super like game breaking, right? They're still going to be able to help your unit out. They're still going to give you that edge that you need um, in order to improve your character, right? Any and all ways to improve your character is going to be very very really beneficial. So when you do have the opportunity to uh, rune up your monster, definitely do so. Okay, so. Uh, as far as this setup here goes, this particular formation window is just going to show you your monsters you got on the front line, uh, as well as you got on the back line, right? Generally speaking, you're going to be putting your tank units, uh, your, you know, your very, very tanky defensive type monsters uh, set up in the front line as well. And the damage dealers are going to have, you know, a mixture of some of your support, uh, as well as most of your DPS here. Um, basically how this goes when it comes to the gameplay, uh, when you get started, you're essentially going to be auto attacking the first person in the lineup. And then after the auto attack, it's going to work down the line, right? As you guys can see, we got, you know, one, two, three, four in the front line. That's going to be the order that the, the opponent is going to be attacking in auto attack fashion. And then after that, they're going to you know, right on over here to the back line, attacking five, six, seven, and eight respectively. Now, the thing to you know, point out here is that obviously the goal is to keep your, you know, your whole team uh, alive as long as possible here. But obviously, uh, you definitely don't want them uh, to go ahead and, uh, you know, take out that backline because the backline is going to be the backbone of your team. You know, that's going to be the core damage that you're looking to utilize. Some of those units are going to bring in that crazy amount of damage, a crazy amount of CC, the crazy amount of abilities 
uh, that's going to allow you to just kind of get the jump on your opponent. So again, doing everything and anything you can to protect them with a strong front line is going to be very beneficial. So make sure that you're um, taking a look at specific units and picking ones that kind of fit your kind of style of play, but also make sense when you're setting them up here. Uh, now, again, there's so much more to talk about this when it comes to the setup. So I'm not going to get too into it, but I just want to kind of give you an overall layout of what we got going on here. We got the front line, we got the back line, then we got our three skills that we have set up here. Uh, excuse me, our free, three spells that we have set up in this lineup. So uh, as far as that goes, uh, that is pretty much the formation. Now, again, once you get done with that tutorial, uh, you know, you're going to be looking to do a couple matches and climb up victory points. So one thing that's really unique about this game is that you don't get to jump into like scenario mode right from the get go. You actually have to jump into dual mode first, get yourself a couple of points, and then that, those could unlock some various things. It's going to lock your territory on the bottom here. Uh, it's going to lock your uh, ability to have an alliance or have a guild. Um, you're also going to be able to uh, do different modes here. We got the single mode. We got the challenge mode. Uh, which is really cool. Single mode is essentially for the siege battle. It feels like scenario play. We're just going to go through the process, get some three stars here, get some rewards, uh, get some free stuff, which is obviously going to be very, very beneficial, right? Uh, we'll take anything and everything we can. Then you got this wanted poster list. We're basically going to have different units uh, throughout the way uh, that you're going to be able to take on here. And again, you know, once you get them cleared, you're going to get yourself some rewards. Uh, in this case, going to be some glory medals here. So um, really, really nice indeed. Now, challenge mode, I haven't actually jumped into this here, uh, but it looks like this is very similar to the World 100 Invitational where we're going to be jumping into this battle. We're going to have, you know, some kind of, you know, essentially, uh, I don't want to say handicap, but I can't think of another way, you know, some kind of something that's going to basically kind of put us in a, in a situation at disadvantage potentially here. So, um, you know, we can essentially get specific rewards if we hit a certain amount of wins. Um, but obviously, if we lose up to three matches, I believe that's when the the battle ends, and we cannot kind of we can't move forward in this uh, particular uh, challenge here. But again, um, I, I can't. I only can talk about what I've seen so far. Again, it's only been twenty four hours. So again, if you have any more information on the challenge mode, leave it in the comment section down below. Okay. Now, as far as the overall resources, we got the mana at the top right, as well as the crystals on the top right as well. The crystals I just utilized for summons, uh, and the mana I've been utilizing to basically improve my units. So. Uh, if we were going to a specific monster, let's say we're looking at Jean, right? As you guys can see, Jean is uh, cur currently level seven right now. And uh, if we wanted to upgrade it, uh, which is basically allowing us to improve the attack, the defense, the HP of the unit, um, we need to have a certain amount of cards and we need to obviously have ourselves, uh, you know, 3000 mana here. So this is something that's going to be very, very important to do because uh, for those who don't know, uh, when you get these specific cards, you know, they're they're they're, they're able to be leveled up to uh, 15, if I recall correctly here. So uh, obviously anything and everything you can do to, uh, you know, get those cards and, you know, level up the unit so that it can be that much stronger in the battle. Um, it's going to be very important here. And obviously, uh, even if you have, you know, all the cards in the world to go ahead and upgrade it, if you don't have that mana uh, in this, uh, you know, if you don't have the mana to be able to upgrade it, it's going to be sitting at a, sit a you're going to be sitting at a disadvantage because you're not going to be able to level it up here. So again, keep on doing all the events, keep on doing all the daily quests that it gives you so you can get those rewards, take advantage of it. And, uh, you know, like I said, being able to be able to level up uh, those units here. So, um, as far as the top goes here, you can obviously look at them, um, you know, any way you want to here. But one thing I want to point out is, you know, you have a couple of ways of, of taking a look at it. So if you want to look at it, as far as the card grade goes, you're going to put all your rarest units up top. You can do that. Uh, if you want to look at it from a mana cost perspective, you're one of those people that want to, uh, utilize, a uh, specific composition using a very, very low amount of mana cost, then, you know, maybe looking at this, uh, this way is going to be a very important thing to do. Okay. So yeah, basically that's what it is right here. You got your monsters, you got your spells, uh, the ones you haven't acquired and you got some fun little things here, some emojis that you could throw in the mix here. I'm not going to worry about that, but I just want to let you know that it is there as well. So, uh, down below, you got the tutorial here, uh, this mission office, you're going to be able to go into there. Um, th again, this is not something you're going to be able to jump into right away. Once you get yourself uh, get yourself uh, a few levels up here, uh, you know, a few victory points, you're going to be able to come in here and basically, uh, collect some free rewards. Uh, once you just, you know, essentially assign units, uh, to this mission office here. So as you guys can see, I've assigned a couple of units here. Um, it's allowed me to collect a rune as well as some uh, crafting material. This crafting material is what I'm going to utilize to make more runes, uh, down the road here. Now, again, the, the runes that I'm getting right now are not going to be anything crazy, but just like summoners War sky arena, um, you know, being able to get yourself a complete set of runes, getting a little bit of bonus, um, obviously any, anything and everything to help out your units is going to be great. Um, especially if you got certain units in your lineup or you're very, very fortunate to get yourself some hero or legendary characters, being able to put, you know, uh, a rune set on them just to give them that much more of an edge is going to be really, really nice for you. So definitely take advantage of it. Okay. Um, yeah, so we got some rewards there. I went ahead and collected it. Now the craft building, uh, this is the area that you're going to be crafting some runes here. You got a couple of options. You can craft a low mid or high level rune. 
But as you guys can see, we cannot do that until we get a little bit higher. Now, me personally, I'm sure you can make an argument to craft some runes right now, but right now, just kind of going through the process of uh, doing the regular matches here, I haven't had any reason to go ahead and uh, like, you know, make runes right away. So I'm saving the material for the time being and just taking advantage of the units that I got, using my skills, my abilities, my reaction time to try to get those wins. Um, but down the road, yes, I will be uh, definitely crafting some runes. I'm hoping to save my materials um, so that when I get higher in the account level, um, I can go ahead and craft those high quality runes so I can get a little bit more bang for my buck here. So again, that's just my personal opinion. If you got a different opinion about that, you know, leave it in the comment section down below, okay? Uh, next one up here, we got the Magic Shop. Again, a typical shop that you would see in any kind of gacha game. You're gonna have some type of card, some kind of skill or something like that, that you're gonna be able to see in here. And, uh, you know, if you wanna pay a specific amount of mana, uh, you, you'll be able to obtain it here. So this might be super important for you um, if you have a specific character that's really, really close to being leveled. Uh, keep in mind though, one thing I haven't pointed out, um, if you haven't realized already, joining an alliance um, is really, really cool because in, in the alliance, you're able to actually, you're able to actually request cards uh, in your specific alliance so that uh, you can, you know, get yourself some stuff here. So it's pretty cool. You got the alliance trading post over here. Again, uh, I've requested some Ramagoth stuff, so, uh, which is great. Uh, failed to find data. Okay, this is epic fail, but that's okay. <laughs> epic fail, right? Epic fail LC is the, the guild that I'm currently in. Um, so yeah, let me do a little example here. Uh, let's go ahead. Take a look at my nine. I'm trying to look and see which, you know, which unit is super, super close, right? Or which is some, you know, a specific unit that I uh, use quite a bit here. So um, now I think I want to do, you know, I'm just going to do Ramagos, right? We'll just do Ramagos here. We'll request it. Let's see if they help me out. You know, we got seven hours for them or seven hours until they, we can request the next one here. So make sure you're taking advantage of that, being able to request cards, uh, you know, basically as much as possible, right? If you are in need of some specific ones here. Yeah. So you got your trading post to go ahead and trade stuff. You got the office in order to join. And then, of course, you got the Alliance shop here to get some stuff based on the uh, uh, rewards you get through the Alliance, right? So definitely take advantage of that when you can. Um, really, really beneficial here. Now, again, let's get back to the, for all of you guys that are jumping into this game, you're like, okay, where, where do I go to get all my, you know, free rewards, right? So the daily quests is going to be important. The challenges are going to be important. So take advantage of those, uh, whether they're in the others or battle, all this stuff you want to take a look at uh, for the time being here. Make sure that you're doing everything you can so you can get those rewards, get those additional summons in and basically get yourself uh, started on the right track here. Uh, moving up though, we if we take a look at the top left here, um, this is also gonna be important to take a look at because even though there's nothing that's quest related, you will see some free rewards, you will see some things that you can pick up uh, uh, and take advantage of if you want to spend some money, right? So you got a couple of different options over here, special upgrade event that's going on. And if I recall correctly, there was, um, I thought there was something else here that was free. It might've just been the limited time thing that came over um, you know, weekly and daily. There was a weekly package, it was a daily package. So make sure that you guys are clicking on that. If there's a notification there, like the red dot do you see on the event button right above me, uh, you know, make sure you click on it, take a look at it so you can take those rewards uh, and utilize them in your favor, right? Uh, again, uh, another way of, uh, you know, obtaining some great rewards here is gonna be the event page. So make sure you guys are checking on this here, clicking every single time. I believe it's seven o'clock Central Standard Time uh, is when the day changes over for me uh, so definitely take advantage of that. Make sure that you're not uh, slacking when it comes to picking up your war wars, uh, because I want you to make sure that uh, you kind of move along with the rest of the people out there playing this game. Get up the rewards, you know, help your help your account out, help your guild out or your alliance out um, with all the rewards that you can obtain uh, in this thing here. So um, that's pretty much the majority of the stuff. Of course, last but not least, we have ourselves uh, the different types of summons here. We got the glory summon, which is going to give us a normal to hero units. Mystical Summon is going to give you a normal to legend, and then Ancient Summon, which is like your legendary scroll, is going to give you a hero or a legend, uh, essentially, you know, character spells. We got hero spells as well as, well as hero to legend skill stones here. So this is really nice. I don't have any of those books. I do have one book here. I'm just going to, I have six books. I just want to do one book so you guys can see the uh, actual summon animation, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, pretty basic here. Of course, we didn't get anything that we wanted, but as well, technically, I take that back. Colleen's actually a good unit. Definitely don't you know, keep her at the side, but you know, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, nothing too crazy about that here. So again, I think that pretty much covers the majority of the stuff that I wanted to talk about here. Again, uh, I could drop some gameplay, but I feel like this video is already fairly long. Yeah. So you know what? I, I, I'll do one. I'll do one. Let's go ahead and do a match here. Um, cause obviously we need to rank up. We're at the top 30%. I'm going to utilize the composition that I've been playing around with here for a little bit. So I'll kind of talk about as I'll just show the gameplay. I'll try to talk about my thought process getting into this. And uh, hopefully this helps you out. Once again, guys, do me a favor. If you are really joining content, if you like the way I'm doing these video type of videos, you know, leave a comment in the comments down below. Let me know, like the video. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to hear your feedback. 
and I'm looking to, you know, adapt or change the way I do stuff uh, if there's something else you want to see here. So uh, when you jump into the match, you're always going to see their units here, but you're never going to see their cards. They do have cards, but you're not going to see the cards here. It takes away too much strategy. So um, again, once you jump into the match, you're going to have your four cards here. You're going to be collecting your mana. And so we're just going to be paying attention to what we're doing here. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and just knock this unit out right here. Um, so I can go ahead and get the kill. It's unfortunate that I have the unrecoverable, so I won't be able to take advantage of the HP, um, but that is okay. Let's go ahead and do this so we can get the, uh, so we can get the little bit of baby heal here, um, which is great. And as you guys can see, we have Mav coming up on the line. So we're going to be able to switch our Ram and Ghost off, keeping our unit of the life for a little bit. That's the cool thing about Mav. Mav provides a defense buff as well as changes the position. Now, um, I just... Uh, just notice that they healed their main unit here, um, but unfortunately, uh, so we weren't able to get the we weren't able to get the kill on this one. Let's go ahead and do this. I think I need to go ahead and use McKean. Funny enough, though, I've seen you guys' comments in one of my previous videos here. Um, you guys were super funny. Yes, I was talking about I was I thought I was using Prilia, but apparently I was not. So yeah, it's hilarious, right? Absolutely hilarious here. So, um, but yes, I do I do see the difference in McKean, and I, I don't know why it was um, I was. But, you know, I thought about the wrong one there. So, all right. So here's the deal. I just, I was trying to go for Megan. I ended up killing this one here. I was trying to time that a little bit better. Um, didn't work out, but it's all good. Let me see if I can get a stun on this uh, Water Nine Tails. I don't think I was able to. I'm just going to go and cast some skills because I got the mana to do so. Generally, I like to wait a little bit to see what it cast um, so that I can try to effectively counter. So uh, one thing to kind of point out here as well that I want to go ahead and mention is that when it comes to countering, it, it kind of seems pretty straightforward, right? They cast a kill, you sneak in, cast an ability, and you counter them. But here's the thing about it, don't rush the counter, right? Make sure that you're utilizing a counter that actually benefits you in that situation, right? If you got Thrain in the back line, getting ready to stun, um, you know, definitely make sure that you are casting an ability that can essentially counter what he's trying to bring into the mix here. So if you're like me that I got this spell right now, I'm waiting for Thrain to do his ability. Um, if he wants to do it, I believe this spell this spell right here does the immunity, provides the immunity for my team. So right there, I just countered, not allowing Thrain to go ahead and do it. Now, if I was just throwing in the counter that, you know, provided me a buff or whatnot here, great. I was able to sneak in a buff and maybe make myself a little bit stronger, a little bit more damage um, right before they attack me. It's whatever, right? You know, we'll, we'll take it. But uh, the big thing of it is, is that, you know, being able to utilize the counter in a way that gives you a really great benefit um, really is going to make or break. Uh, your matches, uh, you know, moving through, right? Especially for a situation like that, where Thrain literally is randomly attacking the targets, being able to stun the opponent. If you sneak in a counter and put in your immunity, literally it just nullifies his ability that doesn't do anything. It negates his ability, uh, basically making that a wasted amount of mana, which for Thrain is five mana, which is actually quite uh, a handful, given the fact that you can only hold uh, 10 right there. So again, that's just a little bit of the gameplay. I'm actually glad that I did, you know, take a video, you know, take a little time. I'm trying not to make this a super long video, but uh, I think, you know, just kind of talking a little bit about the game and then showing the gameplay, um, it's going to kind of help you guys tie everything together. So once again, fam, that's going to be the end of the video. We'll definitely be doing, uh, I got so many videos down the road that I want to drop here. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, can't wait to get those out. I hope you guys are excited as I am to see some new content for Summoners for Sky Arena. And once again, I'm going to drop it because I just love to mention it so many times. I need to know if you guys are enjoying this content. If you are, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care.